Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64 going on the big screen today. Um, talk about something that uh, Ecru Symphony found, and I wanted to show you on big screen. If you're on your television, this helps a lot rather than look on that little phone screen. And if you're on your phone, I'm not sure how that looks. Take normal. So let me go into uh, this stuff. Um, so. Ecro Symphony found that the, let me close that. I'm not really good on this computer, so. I'm not really good on this, so let me try to figure it out real quick. Easier on my phone. All right, let's go here. And we'll go here. Now on the timeline, she found over here that the day out of time, remember I had over in here in these 58 days, uh, Joshua's long day because f from Pentecost where Mary went to see Elizabeth and John leaped in the womb, I'm sorry, yeah, John leaped in the womb, um, Jesus would have just the egg would have just attached to the uterine wall, which happens on the seventh day after she uh, she conceives. So on this day, she sees there's a reason for everything, especially when it comes to God himself. And every date is super important. So here we are on Pentecost. And I count to the next event, and something should happen 57 days later. And like this 57 days later happened when Mary went to see Elizabeth and this 57 days later happened on a Pentecost. So you go 57 days and I had this problem right here where it landed one day off. So I knew Joshua's long day was in here somewhere. So she did some work and she found it. There is one day that equals 48 hours, which is why the Enoch calendar is 364 days and uh, the Gregorian calendar is 365 days. We should have, while building this calendar, obeyed the Bible and called, for example, a Saturday or a Sunday or a Tuesday. It doesn't matter what day. We should have said, okay, it's Tuesday for 48 hours to acknowledge the Joshua's long day. It's quite a thing that God did for man. As a matter of fact, God said, this is the last time I will um, listen to man. Now, I'm guessing, I can't see it, but I'm guessing my photo is down there in the bottom right covering up a lot of this stuff. And I don't know how to get rid of that. But if you look down here, I don't know if my photo covers it, but from, and I'll, I'll explain this clearly, Shabbat 11. Shabbat 11 is the 11th month and the 11th day. This is 11th month, 11th day. This is what everybody's seeing, 11-11. Purim is 11 months and 11 days after the head of the year. So from March 17th, the head of the year, to February 28th, March 1st. Remember, there's a day out of time. So right in this area, there was a problem. And I, I said that several times in several videos that there was a problem in this area because I couldn't make it match. And why would it go 58 days from Pentecost to Purim? Purim is a Pentecost. It is the last Pentecost of the year. It lands on February 28th, March 1st, and it is 58 days away. Again, I said I had a problem here, and I I knew the issue was in here somewhere, but I could never find it, but Ikra Symphony found it. I'm going to play you a part of her video. I would uh, suggest to go over and subscribe to her channel and watch the entire video. She does a very good job of explaining how this is Joshua's long day. Now, I want you to notice something before I go over there. February 10th, 11th is 48 hours. We're calling it 10th, 11th. Technically, it should be just February the 11th for 48 hours. This is Joshua's long day. Uh, Acre Symphony found it. I wrote it there. Now, come down here. And what blows my mind and why I'm here today 
is because from the 11, 11, from the 11th month, the 11th day to 11 months and 11 days after the head of the year, it is 17 days to Joshua's long day. And it is 17 days to the uh, 11 months and 11 days after the head of the year. And it is 17 days to it goes on past here. I actually have an arrow on the paper. I didn't put on, uh, I didn't take the picture, but whoops. And that happened. Let's see here. Let's see. Where did I go? Yeah, we're going to have a little bit of a technical issue as I figure this out. But, okay, I don't know why it's doing that. Maybe, maybe oh, there it goes. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Oh, my goodness. How does this keep happening? I need to get more technical. I know that. All right, so. The next 17 days after 11 months and 11 days after the head of the year lands on March 17th. There was an arrow down here. It goes to March 17th. Exactly 17 days after um, Purim. Exactly. So that's why I'm on here is to show you that there is a countdown happening. And I am more and more convinced every single day that we're looking at maybe i don't want to say for certain that we're looking at maybe a rapture event happening on um march the 16th the dead in christ go first let me go back to where i just was real quick and show you something also that i thought of while i was uh doing this over here I think Lazarus got sick on March the 13th. On March the 14th, Mary and Martha sent a messenger to... <sighs> I guess that's going to keep happening to me. There must be an arrow. Oh, there it is. Uh, sent a messenger to Jesus that Lazarus was sick. So they have to walk for two days. They walked two days to get to Jesus. When they get there, it is March. Okay. That's not annoying at all. And it keeps happening. This is going to be a very long video because I'm not technologically advanced. Over the, on the right, hopefully my picture's not covering it. March the 16th. Um, on March the 16th, the messenger arrives to Jesus. Jesus says, are there not 12 hours in the day? He says that Lazarus, in fact, is not sick. He has died. The messengers do not know this because it is a two-day walk. They left. Lazarus gets sick on the 13th. Now, tomorrow is the 13th. I would suspect that we would see something tomorrow. Uh, some kind of a uh, cataclysmic event. I don't know what all this is. Oh, I don't know why that's all there. But so I wanted to show you something that Eucharist Symphony uh, to, to confirm what I was saying. I didn't find this. She did. Um, she spent her time. She was ill. She had food poisoning. So um, she was down for a few days, but she's back up and she uh, she finds this. And I think. And I'm like, wow, that is uh, that is cool. Let's see here. Man, I wish I knew what I was doing. Okay, it's up here. There it is. Let me play this for you. Keep a consistent calendar and not jump around to another date. I believe that Joshua's long day and King had. Hezekiah's sign occurred on the same calendar date. That's in order to maintain the same start date of the calendar on Nissan 1 being March 17th. Not saying it occurred on March 17th, which I'll show next, but that these two events, Joshua's long date and King Hezekiah's sign, had the fall on the same calendar date 
in order to have the same start date for the calendar. So now I'm going to move on to what date in the year did Joshua's long day and King Hezekiah's sign occur on? And that was the information that I said I was going to provide to Repo Man 64 because he had that missing on his calendar and wanted to rectify that. So in order to determine what date of the year that both Joshua's long day and King Hezekiah's sign occurred, I'm only going to look, because they're the same date, I'm only going to look at Joshua chapter 10 again, verses 12 and verse 13. So it says in verse 12 that the sun stood still over Gibeon, and that's the city of Gibeon where they were having the battle. And then in verse 13, it says the sun stood still in the mist of heaven. So the mist of heaven is at noon and at the astronomical meridian. And so that's where it was for about a whole day. So in order to find out what day that occurred, you need to have both the geographic location of ancient Gibeon so it's longitude and latitude, so you can put that into Stellarium. And this is what they have listed for that. It might be off a little bit. And then you need to know when high noon occurred at this location, that being the meridian, as well as you need to know information about the analemma. So this is just a brief definition of the analemma or the figure eight that the sun forms in the sky. This is a graph of it, and this is actually a snapshot of it over the lake of Varazzi in Italy, which was the closest location I could find to Gibeon or Jerusalem, Israel. So if you look at the sun, at the same time each day, and typically they do this at noon, from the same exact geographic location, the sun forms a figure eight in the sky. So it has this figure eight loop. So the bottom part of it is actually the winter solstice, and the very top part of it is the summer solstice. And this pattern is called the analemma. So this analemma pattern is the easiest way to find out where the sun is each day of the year at high noon in the mist of the heavens, uh, as opposed to going through 365 days on Stellarium through trial and error to try and find that date. So this tool makes it much easier to determine when that date was. So Repo Man 64 had told me that based on his calendar, his Enoch calendar, that he knew that it was after Halloween, October 31st. And so the easy answer is it's the broadest location across the analemma. And then for Italy, it's called the maximum anticipation and the maximum retardation. So there's two feasible dates. So since Israel is a little bit north of Italy, then these dates, February 12th and November 3rd, for Gibeon, the Battle of Gibeon, would occur within a day or two prior to these dates shown. So it would be around February 12th and November 3rd, but you have to then go into Stellarium to figure out which one of the two that it is. So this analemma shown here, uh, which is a bit of a eye chart, is from the British Conservatory. So it's actually well north of Israel, but if you draw a line across the broadest point here, you end up with October 31st and February 11th. So for the Gibeon geographic location, 
in Stellarium, you see that the sun is exactly at the meridian and the ecliptic on October 31st. The year doesn't matter, just the date at 11.23 a.m., so 37 minutes before noon, and this discrepancy is due to the fact that the analemma is at the British Conservatory, and then for that other one, the photograph was taken at Italy. If they had an analemma specifically for this location, this value should be close to noon. And then for the February 11th date, the sun is at the meridian intersecting the ecliptic at 11.53 a.m. and 30 seconds, so six and a half minutes before noon. So, in fact, this date is the closest date, the February 11th date, as opposed to the October 31st date to when the sun was at the mist of heaven or the meridian. So therefore of the two days, Joshua's long day and Hezekiah's sundial sign that went backwards fell on both of them on February 11th. And in fact, on February 11th of 2021, you see the sign of the Son of Man forming the cross over the scapegoat with the sun being the Godhead, the bride and the church being the new moon, and on the other side of the cross is the planet Mercury, which is the angel Mer uh, and messenger. There was a Venus and Jupiter conjunction, which is the king planet, which is also striped, and then Venus, the bright and morning star, which is Jesus Christ. And at the foot of the cross, which is the planet Saturn being Satan. And if you look at that same date again, in which the sign of the Son of Man occurred on February 11th in 2021, you see that that same sign of the cross with the new moon and Mercury, the Godhead, the sun, the... Jupiter, Venus conjunction, and Saturn at the end of the cross, you see that the sun is actually at the meridian with the intersection of the ecliptic at 1153.22, which is eight seconds earlier than at the one that was at the battle of Gibeon for Joshua's long day. But Gibeon, the city, the ancient city, is just a little bit offset from Jerusalem, thus it having the eight-second delay. And finally, I don't know if this is noteworthy or not, but in Zechariah 1, in verse 7 through 9, you have on the 24th day of the 11th month, the month of Shabbat, the Sign of the Son of Man occurred four days after that, which would be on the 28th day of the 11th month. So at that time, a man was riding a red horse among the myrtle trees, but there was still peace. So I don't know if four days later, we now no longer have. Okay, sorry about all this technological stuff. Please go watch her video. She does a very good job of showing uh, the sign of the Son of Man. And let's go through the pictures real quick. And um, March 16th, everything just keeps falling on March 16th, March 16th, March 17th is the head of the year. It just all lines up and uh, getting very excited. Um, we're looking at four days from now, perhaps. And uh, let me go through all the pictures. I just moved them over here. Speak thou also. This is um, 
31.13. I did not see uh, what verse it was um, or what, what uh, book it was. Speak thou unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, oh, this is, this is where God is saying how important his Sabbath is. That's the one commandment that we don't quite understand, and I think we do now. I think March 16th is the last Sabbath of every year, setting up the Sabbath for the following year. You know you're right on track when the very next day the four-star algenib skirts along the horizon. You know you're right on track because this day is the day of equal parts, the day where there are 12 hours in a day and 12 hours a night. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily, my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, which means this is very important to figure out the Sabbath, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. If it was intended for all mankind, then why specifically say strangers within your gates? I guess somebody had written that. This is, um, I, forget the, I forget the name she gave it, but this is a procession of the sun. Uh, she gave it an actual name, uh, Ecre Symphony. Did I think it's up here in the top? Let's see. Yeah, analemma. That's what it's called. This is the analemma. And I wanted you to notice um, that the day of equal parts is March 16th, right here. This is the day where there are 12 hours in the day and 12 hours at night. Then it cuts up here. This is. The, oh, sorry. Then this, and this is where the four-star algenib skirts along the horizon. It does it again here. It is 10 days off. This is why Noah was on the ark for one year and 10 days, because a shift happened on the planet. This was the head of the year previous to the flood, September the 15th. But today, as we know it, this is also the day of equal parts, September the 25th, 26th. This is the day... That was the head of the year. This is the day the four star of algae skirt along the horizon. March the 26th is the triumphant entry of Jesus. This was the day that before the flood that the four star of algae skirt along the horizon. It's 10 days off. Something happened at the flood, moving at 10 days. To begin our summer up here at the top, it starts on June the 15th and ends on June the 30th. There are seven and seven on either side. It's a 15-day period. Right in the center is June 21st. At this moment in time is where the sun goes into the Tropic of Cancer. You can see it up here. There's a dotted line. It enters right there, and it exits right here. Same thing down here at the winter solstice, the Tropic of Capricorn. It enters right here on December the 15th. And do they see the dotted line? And it exits over here on December the 30th. Seven days and seven days. And right in the center is the shortest day of the year, December the 21st. The day of equal parts is September the 26th, but the star algenib skirts along the horizon on September the 15th. These two were together previous to the flood. These two are together here post-flood, March 16th, the four star of algenib skirts along the horizon, and it is also the day of equal parts. We'll go on to the next picture. After two days, Jesus said, after two days, we had a huge sign in heaven. The day everybody thought was the rapture on September the 21st, uh, 23rd, 2017. If you add 2,000 days to that Revelation 12 sign, you land on the day of equal parts on March 16th, 2023. After two days, at the end of March 16th is when I think perhaps at the midnight cry. That keeps happening. Again, I wanted to show you, this is the day of equal parts. The very next day on the 17th, you can see there are 12 hours. 12 hours and 51 seconds. It's past the day of equal parts. It's located here somewhere in the 16th. It is. It will balance out at some point here on the 16th. I've heard 5.48 p.m., 5.47 p.m. is where it balances, but I'm not sure. 
And this is what Ikra Symphony was talking about. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Joshua, and the sun stood still in the midst of heavens, and it took. And it's oh, this now we found this in, in the book of, and I think it says it in the Bible. I'm pretty sure it says in the Bible, is it not written in the book of Jasher? If you go to the book of Jasher, chapter 88, verse 64, there's the eight repeated twice, 88. It's repeated twice. And the Lord hearkened unto the voice of Joshua, and the sun stood still in the midst of heavens, and it stood still 36 moments, 36 hours. The sun was up for 36 hours, and it was down for 12, totaling 48 hours. And the moon also stood still and hastened not to go down a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord, that the Lord hearkened to the voice of man, for the Lord fought for Israel you'll find that written is it not written in the book of jasher and here's what eager simply was talking about was gibeon and the moon in the valley of agilon i got this this is why the the uh, discourse so fantastic i got this from uh, a comment uh, in my room on the discord and i'm going to leave a link to eager symphony and uh, my discord uh it's it's iron just sharpens iron in here there's so much information everybody's working so hard together to try to figure this out and i get just so much insight from people in here and he finds zaniah for jesus finds that is why i am of the belief that when it says genesis it says in genesis 5 23 24 about enoch who actually gets raptured if you transpose the verse numbers to the year numbers guess what you get what's at the very end of march 16th 2023 what is march 17th 2024 57 83 has not happened yet and it will not happen until March the 17th. The new Rosh Hashanah, the Rosh Hashanah that God told Moses to change the head of the year to, 5783. And he went backwards six months. So 5783, we still haven't caught up to it yet. We will catch up to it on March the 17th. Uh, March the 16th is the last Sabbath of the year. So 2023 to 2024 he says is the last mentions of Enoch uh, and that you, you put it to the year in March 16th being 2023 and March 17th being 2024. So I thought that was pretty, a pretty cool find that he had. Now we know the Jews do not adhere to any correct calendar. They are using the moon still. Um, or they're attempting to make things happen on a specific day. Like I said, if you would have taken a Tuesday, for example, and made it Tuesday for 48 hours rather than adding a day, rather than doing that, if you would have just done the Tuesday or Saturday, let's have a three-day weekend. We do it all the time, make Saturday last for two days. But they didn't want to do that. They wanted it to be consecutive. So therefore, each year you'll notice that uh, Christmas will be on a Sunday one year, and then the next year it'll be on a Monday, and then the next year it'll be on a Tuesday. It moves, but that's not how God created time. Purim. They're calling Purim in 1953 when Joseph Stalin had his fatal stroke. What day did they call Purim in 1953? March 1st. This is the day that the Enoch timeline shows for 2023. 70 years later. So sometimes their calendar matches. This is from Gina. Also, she posted this. Uh, we have a newsroom where she finds news from around the world. As a matter of fact, that's pretty much where I get most of my news from is in her newsroom uh, on the Discord. So it's fantastic. And this you get these little nuggets coming across all the time and you're just mind blown when you connecting to the calendar procession of the sun all right what is rosh hashanah if god moves the head of the year from september the 15th to march the 17th backwards exactly six months exactly 182 days that is six months on one side between march 17th and september 15th is 182 days 
from March 17th to I'm sorry, from September 15th to March 17th, it is 183 days. In there, I knew somewhere existed the day out of time. And like I showed you, your symphony found it. And so I knew, and, and I knew this at some point we had to call one day 48 hours. But they disobeyed God. They have always disobeyed God. We pray for the Jewish people. They are God's beloved people. God loves them, but they are a stiff-necked, hard-headed group of people. And we know at the very end of the um, seven-year tribulation, or however long it is, uh, there's a lot of good arguments as to how long it lasts. But at the end of this tribulation period, the Jews will look up and realize the one that they pierced and they will cry out and this is going to uh, this is what's going to save them of course jesus is the only way into heaven uh, or even to be in the presence of god in during the millennium this is the only way is through jesus and they will recognize who they pierced rosh hashanah literally means head of the year it is the Jewish New Year. The biblical name for this holiday is Yom Teruah, the day of shouting and blasting. It is the first of the Jewish high holy days, beginning the days of awe, as specified by Leviticus 23, 23 to 25. That, occur, that occurred in, in, in late summer, autumn of the northern hemisphere they're still calling it and then there's 10 days till yom kippur they're still calling it of course in september what year will they call rosh hashanah the jews will call rosh hashanah in 2023 on september the 15th they will call it on september the 15th this is what the Enoch timeline says. It always is, and it never changes. On September the 15th is Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets. However, Exodus 12 says you move it back 182 days, exactly six months, and it will land on March the 17th. If we use the Hebrew the Jewish uh, calendar, the Hebrew calendar, if we do that, it would only stand to reason that if we moved back 182 days, just like God commanded, we would find the Jews recognizing some event on March the 17th, but they do not. There is no event for the Jewish calendar for March the 17th. Passover, if they had moved back, if they moved back 182 days and gone forward 14 days or past even the 30 days past Purim, they do not land on a correct date for Passover still. They are landing days off. You, I don't know how they justify making six days disappear, but let's see. This is First Thessalonians 4, but I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, for as others uh, which have no hope. Let's, let's zoom this in so you can see it. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these things. The most discomforting thing I think I could tell anyone is that you are all going to go through tribulation and get beat up. And then at the end is when you're going to be raptured. The most comforting thing I could tell anyone is that you will escape all these things. If you are a bride and you are watching, if you are the church, you will be raptured. However, the door will stay open. It will stay open just like it did for Noah's Ark. It will remain open just like it did for um, 
Leah and Rachel, give her her seven days. At the end of seven days, he got Leah. He continued working for seven years, but he got Leah, which is why I'm leaning towards these first six seals being opened up in a very quick succession. The seals are judgment. They did not begin to be opened when Jesus went to the cross. They have not been opened yet. The Bible teaches that we are there to witness this event. The Bible even tells us how many of us there are. It says, and the angels heard many voices of the angels and the 24 elders and the four beasts count up to 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands upon thousands, which is somewhere above 100 million, but less than 200 million. But the door stays open, just like Elijah and Elisha. Elisha took on, put on that mantle, put on Jesus, and he is also saved. He received a double portion. He is going to go through some of the tribulation, but that we have not been experienced. If we say that we are experiencing parts of this tribulation now, we are in effect stating that previous to the cross, we were experiencing no tribulation. And if you read the Old Testament, there were giants in those days and they were com committing atrocities and they were trying to wipe out the DNA and they were eating humans. And it was just a terrible time. Um, so, do we say that the seals opened up from when? From when Adam sinned? You could go back as far as you want. No, we have been in a cursed world this entire time, but we are not in any seals just yet. This is her uh, the thing. I took a screenshot of it. Let's see. I wanted to know what 17 meant. And 1 plus 7 equals 8. I found out that the gematria of the word Tav is 17, which contracting. I usually go to uh, uh, Dad Stash. I think it's in uh, Dad Stash. Yeah, in uh, Discord. He has his own room and he does all this gematria stuff. I'm not good with this um, gematria, but he is. And... Um, I just Googled this, and then I found out that the 17th word of Torah is Elohim. But also that the word Torah, 611 equals 6 plus 7 equals 8. yad -Heh vad -Heh equals 8. Contract to 8. The 17th chapter is 1, yad -Heh vad -Heh, and Avram cut out of a covenant. How much is Let's see, how much is Yahweh rules in Gematria? What is the meaning of the Yahweh rules in Gematria? Yahweh rules in Gematria is 1717, decode cipher meaning for Yahweh rules. So 17 is very important. 100, I just wanted to show you that that is what six months equates to. The head of the year used to be on September the 15th. God turned the time back. He went backwards 182 days, and it lands on March the 17th. That is the new Rosh Hashanah. All right, let me see here. Oh, yeah, this happened just now when I was opening the computer, getting this computer uh, set up. I, sh I just shut the computer off for a month or so, and then I had to do like an hour's worth of updates. But as soon as I opened the computer, there you go. It keeps showing it to us. All right, now, let me see if I can go back into this without deleting it. And that's what my point was as I was showing you that. February 11th, right here. February 11th would be two days, so it would encompass February the 10th, February the 12th, two days, 48 hours. It is God rules. God rules on Shabbat 11. God rules when the sign of the Son of Man appears, like uh, Ikra Symphony showed us on February the 11th. This is the day out of time. 17 days later, Purim happens. This is the moment where Venus and Saturn conjunct, uh, conjuncted in heaven. They made a conjunction in heaven. Venus and Saturn did this on Purim. Purim is exactly 30 days before the Passover. The Passover is always on March the 30th, the 31st, depending on if we count from the beginning of the year or we reset our Sabbath on uh, March the 16th. 
17 days later, after Purim, is March the 17th. March the 16th is a super high watch day. I've never seen as much stuff line up right now as I'm seeing right now. March the 13th, Lazarus gets sick. March the 14th, the two mess or the messenger leaves uh, Mary and Martha, walks a two days journey to Jesus, tells Jesus that he's sick. Jesus says, are there not 12 hours in a day? They get, they arrive there on March the 16th. Jesus does not move for two days. He does not move out of his place for two days. And you would wonder why, why, why does he do that? And it is because it is Rosh Hashanah. It is the custom on Rosh Hashanah. And Jesus was not doing this for any other reason than to show us what day it was. He made so many references and so many examples as to when this was that we couldn't possibly ignore it. Down here, again, 17 days after Purim is March the 17th. The midnight cry. The midnight between March the 16th and the 17th for me is a very super high watch day. It is St. Patrick's Day. It is the green day. It is the new year for Moses. We find this in Exodus 12, Rosh Hashanah. This is the year it will become 5783. If you add the 210 lost years, it will be 5993. Now, I wanted to uh, point out something real quick. I haven't made a video on this at all but uh where am i at let me get lost here oh here i am um can i do this and so yeah i can so something that i'm working on i i, I my timelines are for a year and when everything starts to point at a at a date i, I take a note to that 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 is happening um i'm not confident in uh, the March 16th being the date as of the rapture because you have March 17th, which is New Year's Day, and then you have so many events that take place. I mean, there's so much going on right now, 2,000 years ago, that, I mean, it, it's hard to ignore. Uh, you've got uh, you've got Lazarus being resurrected. You have this meal with Mary, Martha, and... Um, Lazarus that takes place. You have six days later, the Bible records that he's on the cross. You have four days previous to that, that he rides in on a donkey. There's so much stuff going on right now. And it's, it's super important. And a part of me believes that the bride will leave before all of this stuff because um, we're separated and, uh, and not a part of that. So, and I mentioned, I mentioned this before, and I don't work on, uh, or I haven't worked on a timeline encompassing all of uh, history. But I can tell you this, that the planet was created in, I'm going to get this wrong, 607 BC. Adam spent seven years in the garden with Eve. In the eighth year, in the 17th day, and in the eighth year, in the second month, in the 17th day, on Halloween day, he sinned. God removed them from the garden. There is a jubilee that begins at creation. There is a jubilee that begins at the fall of man. Creation began in 607 BC. The fall of man happened in 6000 BC. From creation, you go 6000 years. We are currently in the year six coming up on the year on March the 17th, 6000. If you go from the fall of man in uh, 6000 BC, there's seven years in there. There's a reason why Adam was in that garden for seven years before he sinned. It's the time of the tribulation. You go forward 6,000 years and you land on 2030 AD. Is that right? That's why I don't do the, uh, the, the, the calendar. I don't even need this. I don't even know why I'm wearing it. Uh, that's why I don't do the, the calendar 6,000 
So Jubilee begins in 6007 BC and runs its course up to our current year in 2023. There you go, 2023. That totals 6,000 years. Another Jubilee began. There's two Jubilees running simultaneously together, exactly together. The Shemitah cycle lands perfectly because Adam was created in 6007 BC and sinned in 6 thousand BC. So there is a seven year period in there. There is a Shemitah cycle in there in between creation and when he when mankind fell. So if you go forward, we're coming up on 5783, 5993 if you'd like to call it, which is actually more accurate than because the Gregorian calendar is just a random date, except for it. I know God had his hand in it because of all the events, uh, all the holidays that seem seemingly land perfectly like St. Patrick's Day on March the 17th and um, Mary uh, conceiving on uh, Christmas Day and John leaping in the womb on New Year's Day. All these all these events, just, they just aren't accidents. The flood happening on Halloween. It's just none of these things are accidents. So 6007 B.C., is one timeline, a jubilee sequence that goes from 6007 BC to 5993 or 2023. It is the same. Slide forward seven years. Another jubilee sequence is also taking place simultaneously from 6000 BC up to 2030, if that makes sense. 6,000 years in between each event, one of them, and you can go find this in Extra Biblical, that, that uh, Adam, in fact, was in the garden for seven full years, and in the eighth year, in the second month, in the 17th day, on Halloween day, Adam sinned. This is also the same day the flood began. God doesn't, everything he repeats, he, and he does it on purpose, so that you can catch on to what he's saying. So, if there's somebody out there... <laughs> I can't make that's way beyond my the scope of my understanding. But as I was sitting there studying all this, it dawned on me that the seven years of when they were in the garden is also representative of the seven years of the tribulation. So there's a little bit of uh, information there for anybody who would like to uh, run with that. Uh, but the Jubilee cycle for Adam's creation will end on March the 17th, 2023, or March the 17th in the year 5783. The next Jubilee cycle will end because of the seven years he was in the garden and then kicked out, will end in 2030 or 6,000 because it's 5,983 to 6,000. So I don't know if anybody could put that on a timeline. That'd be super interesting to watch. Anyway, RepoMan64, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Um, I'll put a link to Ecro Symphony's video. It's spectacular. She, th that's the type of stuff that those distances or finding those kind of stuff, th those kind of things in Stellarium are incredible to me. And when she found it, and it fell within my 58 days, and it landed 17, 17, and 7. This is a countdown. This is a countdown. And all of this is being revealed to us here in the last days so that we can see it and understand it. Um, in my room is posted the timeline. You can go in and, and see if you can see any relations. I just found that this morning. Or is it like 5, 6 in the morning when I woke up? I always go in there and read everything that I can that I can put my hands on. And I looked at that. I'm like, wait a second. There's three seventeens in there. 17 means God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I don't know. There's a lot of information in there. Um, go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody except the Lord in your heart. This is a private moment between you and him. After you do it, go tell the world. You'll see the change. You'll see the change. Um, is there a war going on in heaven as of Purim, or is it? Did it start on the 24th or the Shabbat 11? I don't know. I mean, there's a, a lot of uh, things that we can't see in this dimension, but there are huge things at play that we can't quite grasp yet. So anyway, we will chat with you again later. Let's see if uh, hopefully this recorded and everything worked out just fine. 
and we'll talk to you again. If I find anything, I'll be right back on.